What's going on everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel and today we are kicking off the week with a new Madden 24 rebuild and it is probably pretty obvious what team we are rebuilding and why we're rebuilding them. The Tennessee Titans, a squad that is apparently fire sale mode ahead of the trade deadline. There are reports Derrick Henry is on the trade block. There's reports that DeAndre Hopkins is on the trade block. We already saw them trade legendary safety Kevin Byard to my Philadelphia Eagles for Terrell Edmonds and day three picks. Like even if, you know, Byard's a little bit washed, still ridiculous value coming to Philadelphia given how weak our safety room is. And then on top of that, oh, it was just Will Levis, first NFL start. He threw for four touchdowns and looked ridiculous. Showed off the arm talent that we all saw at the University of Kentucky, formerly Penn State transfer, like ridiculously beautiful deep balls, pause for Will Levis. So I think um, while there's definitely a lot of hurdles we need to go through, not a great base starting overall, no dev trait whatsoever. We're going to have to get all these things to roll in our favor on top of the fact that I'm going to actively get a, you know, try to be the Tennessee Titans in real life. And we're going to see what kind of value we could get for Derrick Henry and if it's going to be worth shipping him off because Tajay Spears is a special player as well. He's looked very good IRL as someone that owns Tajay Spears stock in fantasy football. And you know, I watched Tennessee play. Obviously, you still have Derrick Henry getting his, getting his 100 yards, still has the big playability, but Spears is absolutely a guy, and I'm kind of starting to see why. Even though you, you think historically what he's done for the franchise, Derrick Henry should be untouchable. If this team is hitting a little bit of a reset and you're getting ready to usher in the Will Levis era, if you can get value right now for Derrick Henry, Tajay Spears looks like he could be a three-down back for the Tennessee Titans. So what I do is when I record something like this first thing in the morning, we crack an energy drink. And to get the brain going, to get me back into Madden, I do the weekly training. So I earned a point here for Tajay Spears. I earned a point for Will Levis. I earned a point on the defense. I got gold in the DB drill, bringing Farley up to a 75. I got one for Simmons and for Jack Gibbons. Whoever the hell this guy is. UDFA out of Minnesota, if I had to guess. I don't think he was actually a drafted player. But, as you may notice on the offensive side, we got our one in a thousand roll. I got gold with Traylon Burks in the wide receiver drill. And we got ourselves a superstar dev. I was like, oh, man. So I just knock it down to star, act like it never happened because it wasn't recording. But I was like, you know what? No, this here is proof that I didn't just... Okay, first of all, why would I ever just cheese and add like, hey, Traylon Burks is a superstar, guys. Trust me. I actually... Because if you just modified it, it would not show in his progression history. And I think it's so freaking rare to actually get those dev traits. We're keeping it, baby. We are getting that little bit of a boost. And we'll say that it just kind of counteracts the starting point of Will Levis... Because, to be fair, Will Levis probably still should have rolled a star dev uh, a part of this rookie class. So, look at the rest of the squad. Hard to kind of break it down because I am going to see what we can get for Derrick Henry. Uh, we will throw up on the trade block first. And then, if not, we'll seek out a trade. Um, but, you know, we get DeAndre Hopkins. I think that's important for Will Levis' development. Even though IRL, he may be kind of grouped in with Derrick Henry on the trade block. I think it's going to be important, as we saw, by him getting three freaking touchdowns in Will Levis' first game. He is that safety net. We have, obviously, Tajay Spears, who has some upside. Traylon Burks rolling that superstar. Has a newfound life in this rebuild. Chica Kwankwo is definitely a, a nice tight end prospect developmental. But the offensive line is brutal. Andre Dillard has been a bust. We're getting a little bit of that, you know, where Bill Belichick's defense. These guys ball out, get paid, go elsewhere. They look terrible. And they eventually find their way back to Bill Belichick. Maybe the season is going to be the Andre Dillard. He was okay in Philly. Obviously, never started for the Eagles. First round bust. But he's always looked somewhat serviceable as a swing tackle. Then goes to Tennessee. Gets his first opportunity to start. He's been terrible. So we're going to keep an eye on this because Skaronsky was a college tackle that they kicked inside the guard. And I think if we can draft a guard sooner than later, um, I think there's going to be more value in Skaronsky moving back to tackle than it is. You just kind of... You know, just accepting Andre Dillard and the ugly contract he has. We'll go MPF at right tackle just because he's a little bit younger. Um, Say with the redundant guard, we'll just, you know, the fact that we're only talking about one or two overall points and four to five years age difference is probably best to go with our best, youngest offensive line here for the Titans. Uh, defensively, you know, Jeff Simmons, monster. They have some really interesting options here in the secondary. One that I'm thinking about. You know, McCreary is solid tackling. You could probably kick Roger McCreary to free safety, and then that would let you have Murphy Bunting, Caleb Farley, and Fulton at corner. But I was already thinking that, and then I just, right now, realize Fulton doesn't have a dev trade. I feel like he's had dev trade the last couple of Maddens. But the fact that he's on normal, we'll probably just keep this as is. Edmonds, obviously a higher rating, but he's only a one-year contract, so maybe we just go with Molden. 
have him start as a normal dev player and maybe get an opportunity that he pops a dev trait scenario in season and then continues to hit the ground running. Get Harold Landry, who I have from afar been noticing Sims out very, very well in Madden 24. He's a guy that I have seen multiple seasons, especially my Cardinals franchise, get double digit sacks. So I'm hoping that we get one of those roles here today. Uh, you got Arden Keys, nice role player. Al Shair coming over from the 49ers, solid linebacker, as well as Gibbons. And I like the fact that we have two normal middle linebackers. One of them is probably going to get a whole lot of tackles, which hopefully by the end of this year one, one of these guys will have a dev trait or two. So let's get into year one of this Tennessee Titan. Will Levis rebuild? But first thing is first, what can we get for Derrick Henry? Speaking of, before he leaves the building, Derrick Henry wants to take Taji Spears under his wing. So we're going to go long-term development because sometimes this is a dev trade. It's not always, but sometimes it is. So let's wait and see what kind of falls out of that. I remember in Madden 23, that, and if we get that, that could very well be a superstar dev trade coming to Taji Spears, which means we almost have to ship off Derrick Henry. That's like Derrick Henry's lasting, you know, thing he can make on this Titans organization before we ship you off we're gonna have Derrick Henry give him the ultimate co-sign and make Tajay Spears along with Traylon Burks a superstar player you cannot get a better start than what we have here the only way this is gonna suck is if Will Levis is brutal absolutely brutal and does not play well at all even if we have to alter the playbook a little bit we have another little scenario here Brunskill School wanting to work with all rookie Skaronski. we will go pass block just because i think we're gonna you know if we trade derrick henry we're gonna usher in a new era here in tennessee and i think something that i want to try to start applying here in my rebuilds is if things aren't going our way and you know usually you could do and say i'm gonna just cheese it and go with the chiefs playbook but i think when you get teams like this for an example let's just because tennessee and we all know the state of playbooks in madden right it's a little bit better this year than it was last year, but it's still heavily dominated by playbooks. Tennessee's, you're always going to run the football. It's always going to act. Whether or not you have Derrick Henry or not, your team is going to sim like you have Derrick Henry. They're going to be a run first team, which is fine right now while we have Derrick Henry. But if our roster, say, come year three, and we've had some underwhelming numbers from Will Levis, rebuilds that I've been doing so far at Madden 24, we just kind of just accept it for what it is. And just like, well, we're just going to watch all of our players lose their dev traits because we're just running the football all the time, even though we clearly should be a team that is throwing the football. So what I'm going to start doing in all of my rebuilds, regular rebuilds, realistic rebuilds, is I am always going to seek out an offensive coordinator and who is a tie. Every coordinator has an offensive scheme, and I'm going to switch to that playbook if we need to. It's going to be my version of of firing a coach and, and rehiring a coach when people are underperforming and players are underperforming. And perfect example is going to be here in Tennessee. If we find, and likely when we find a trade partner for Derrick Henry, and you go to Tajay Spears, who's kind of a do-it-all back, this offense is going to change. The Tennessee Titans is going to look vastly different, even in real life, if they decide to trade Derrick Henry. They're definitely going to throw the football a lot more than what they have. And what we currently have in Tennessee is not indicative of what we want for this offense so it makes sense, much like in real life, how we should approach in these rebuilds. You get someone that can run the offense you want to put out on the field. So that is what we're going to do. And probably sooner than later, maybe in this first offseason, if we can hire an OC that comes with a playbook that we know will be able to maximize Will Levis' development and find a way to get the football, to continue the development and breakouts of Traylon Burks, the resurgence of DeAndre Hopkins, the skill set of Tajay Spears and the breakout of Chiga Conquo, we are going to do that. The first trade after the injury to Kirk Cousins, we have sent Ryan Tannehill to the Minnesota Vikings to try and salvage their season. We're also sending two sevens and a future six. Well, we're getting into salary cap dump at this point. It's a building forward type move at this point. Literally, the only reason why I got those players in, Josh Oliver, Metellus, and Reed, is to make the salary cap work because Ryan Tannehill very expensive. And the value that we get out of this is a fifth rounder in 2024. But the only reason why I would even keep Ryan Tannehill around is if he had the mentorship tag, which would help the development and get extra XP during the season for Will Levis. But of course, the great Ryan Tannehill, zero mentorship tag. It's pretty much every other veteran tag that a quarterback can have in Madden 24 outside of the veterans. So you're gone, man. Don't need you no more. 
And we found a trade for Derrick Henry. I wasn't going to finesse the Ravens. They offered Marlon Humphrey, superstar corner. Like That's probably not going to happen. So what I did is the Ravens have uh, Jones, who's a star dev, second year defensive tackle, nose tackle. And I think we do need a nose tackle. So I was like, all right, I'll take that. Rashad Bateman is probably very tradable right now for the Baltimore Ravens. Underperforming, but he is still 23 years old, 78 with a star dev. But I don't even know. Is he wide receiver four? Right now on the uh, uh, on the Ravens, so I feel like a little bit of a fresh start for Rashad Bateman, who can come in and be our wide receiver three and continue the help of Will Levis. We also were able to get a second and a fourth round pick this year, as well as a future third round pick. This is Derrick Henry is one of those players where if he does get traded, there's almost a hundred percent chance the Titans are overvalued. Like I've already seen it. Like they're like, oh, if we're not getting a first for Derrick Henry, we got to keep him. You're not getting first for a 29 year old running back, but. There still is immense value for win-now teams like the Baltimore Ravens or someone like Derrick Henry could move the needle and make them favorites in the AFC. So I feel like the value that we did get here, I think if Derrick Henry honestly gets traded, you're probably looking at something like this, where you might be able to get two kind of younger, fresh start players, maybe only one younger, fresh start player, and you're going to get, at best, I think second, third, fourth round in that belt. You're not getting a first. So I could have took it. I honestly probably could have got like Marlon Humphrey and a first round pick for Derrick Henry. But we're going to try to keep it a little bit more realistic while still helping our Titans team because this is a move that we don't have to make, but I kind of want to make maybe in, in in anticipation of what could happen ahead of the trade deadline on Monday. And adds an interesting wrinkle here, not just for the Titans in terms of like oh, rebuilding, but also ushering a new era of becoming a team that goes through a Levis and not just hand the ball off to Derrick Henry 30 times a game. We get another mentorship as DeAndre Hopkins wants to take Traylon Burks, who's already got a superstar under. That's three. We've had Tajay Spears get mentorship, Skaronsky get mentorship, and Traylon Burks. This is honestly like the best start I have seen to a preseason of a rebuild in a very long time as we get plus two release, plus two medium route running for Traylon Burks. All right, so the good news of this review was all the dev traits and progress we had in the preseason. The bad news is that we are now 11 weeks into the season and we're 2-7. and seven. Not good, but also, you know, if we are, obviously, with the Derrick Henry trade, kind of resetting a little bit. Having a really good draft pick is going to be nice because we can use that pretty much anywhere. Offensive line, we can go get another wide out, best players at tight end. We can go do that. Defense, pretty much anywhere across the defense top three picks, probably going to be a big time fit for us. So that is kind of the silver lining of it all. Let's look at our contracts, $114 million. What do we got? Do we need fifth year options? Well, we got, ugh. well, fairly and Bateman, we probably will pick up their fifth year option because they're young enough players that we hope continue to develop. Altry likely leaning towards retirement. So that gives us plenty of money with the remaining players. We have Jack Gibbons, who's been uh, obviously a decent success story here. For the Titans. So let's see if we can keep that going. Three year, $12 million. Would love for him to get a dev trade. We have Sean Murphy Bunting, 2681 with a dev trait. And I would like to keep him in the building. Honestly, he wants a little bit more money. Push comes to shove. We might have to make the best decision for the team. Uh, Tart, also really nice player. So we can get him on a four year, $33 million deal. I think him and uh, Simmons can be a real nice one two punch for us long term. Um,. Hmm. I'll show you again. That's just reasonable contract for a guy that's really in that additional three years we signed him for. Not going to regress. He's only going to get better. He could definitely, you know, start dipping into the 80s in terms of overalls, which can get the job done. Uh, I think everything else, we'll kind of just wait and see. Especially on Murphy Bunny turned down that contract. You ain't hot shit. Well, sucky for a good pick. Got kind of blown out the window as we won five in a row. Like, kind of down the stretch. We actually beat the Dolphins and the Seahawks. Kind of highlighting that. We did lose our final two games of the season. Go 7-10. Third in the South. So, we're like, it's kind of the worst spot for us to be. Because at one point, what were we? 2-5? Two 2-6. and, five, two and six. Looked like we'd have a really good pick. And our offense was still playing pretty well. And it all kind of balanced itself out. Because offensively, for a lot of the point, I've seen us have like seven. We, were, we had a green square. Next to our passing offense, which is surprising. Uh, but we finished with a top 10 passing defense. And this is as bad as we're going to be. We're, we got to kind of talk like we're talking like prime time at Colorado. This is the worst we're going to be. We're only going to get better. Uh, taking a look at our stats. Obviously a little unrealistic in the regard that we'll have a start the whole season. Not what is likely going to be the kind of close it out. 
Uh, the good, 3,700 yards, almost 3,800 yards, 29 touchdowns is solid. 18 interceptions, though, might cost him Offensive Rookie of the Year, which we really need so that we can get him off that normal dev trait. Uh, but again, I do think when we go to revision this offense, we'll be able to put him in better positions in terms of throwing the football in the sim. But uh, not a bad not a bad season, all things considered. Running the ball, Tajay Spears, massive shoes to fill. After moving off of the legendary Henry, 1,200, almost 1,300 yards and seven tutties. That'll do. Not bad on the ground as well for Will Levis. An additional 300 yards. So that gives him 4,000 and over 30 total touchdowns. He might. He might. I think I think those 18 picks are probably going to cost him. But we'll see. I've seen worse. Traylon Burks in the slot continues his breakout. 89 catches, 1,400 yards, nine touchdowns. That is what Titan fans want to see IRL because... There's no matter what way you cut it, the Titans essentially decided to save money, to be cheap. I don't even want to say save money because it wasn't like they spent that money elsewhere and bringing big time players in. Basically, the Titans wanted to be cheap and replace AJ Brown with Traylon Burks. And as someone that did like Traylon Burks coming out of Arkansas, but also understood that you know you're going to need a little bit of a learning curve because he was kind of more of a weapon than a refined receiver at Arkansas. Um, and now you're watching AJ Brown arguably be the best player in the NFL this season. It's cool to at least have Traylon Burks and Paulo for us here in Madden. Uh, 12 tutties for DeAndre Hopkins on 958 yards. That's pretty solid. 600 yards for Bateman as a good role player. Conquo with a respectable season. Defensively, Jack Gibbons. Tackle machine, 118 tackles, three TFLs, two sacks. We got 14 and a half sacks for Jeff Simmons, seven and a half for Harold Landry. Definitely one of the best 3-4 Sim defenses in Madden 24 are the Tennessee Titans. Mike Vrabel. Uh, very good coach. Sean Murphy Bunting, who we did re-sign to a three-year contract, led the team with three picks. We had two picks from Roger McCreary. Taking a look at the awards, MVP goes to Joseph Burrow. And what is our AFC? Oh, we got Joe Mixon there, and obviously Derrick Henry is going to crush it for the Baltimore Ravens. Traylon Burks coming in number 10 in Offensive Player of the Year voting. Jeff Simmons coming in number 8. Offensive rookie there goes to Rache Rice. Ties these Spears at 2 and those interceptions absolutely costing Will Levis here. But I guess out of the the, the the you know the bundle of quarterbacks, rookies that is, in the AFC of Anthony Richardson and CJ Stroud, we got highest of that. But it is a really good year for rookies. HN, Zay Flowers is a beast. Josh Downs is making some plays. So it's, you know, I, I, I with that amount of interceptions, I can't even be salty. It, it kind of just was expected. You can't turn the ball over that much. We need to work on that. Uh, look at the rest. Hey, show Will Levis does make the cutoff here for the top ten quarterbacks in the conference. Um, Derek Henry crushed it. Traylon Burks playing like a top five wide receiver. DeAndre Hopkins making the top ten there. And on the defense side, Jeff Simmons number seven for D lineman of the year. Harold Landry number six for linebacker of the year. Nothing for DBs. Nothing for special. Oh, Nick Folk, old man Nick Folk making it there for the kickers of the year. So, yeah, we do need to golly go get ourselves a new offensive coordinator that can help the development of Will Levis. And that is really going to be our first big move of the offseason. Let's see if we got any good dev trade roles. And on the offense, we did not. Uh, I guess the, the good would be there's no regression. Tazi Spears held on to his superstar. Traylon Burks held on to his superstar. D-Hop, he had 12 touchdowns. Could have seen him potentially going up a dev. Uh, but really just painful not to have Will Levis go up one. Uh, but we're going to work through it this offseason. On the defensive side, Harold Landry goes from star up to a superstar. No devs for either of our starting linebackers, which is a little painful. Uh, everyone on the D-line there keeps their dev trade. So no dev trade regression, which on you know a 7-10 season, you know, fair. And going into free agency, swung and missed here. I wanted to get Grant Delpit at safety. He decided to go to the Denver Broncos for some reason. Other than that, a little light in the ass for free agency. I thought Josh Allen could have been an interesting target, um, but a lot of money. Would he join the Titans? Probably not. I don't know. Is there a rivalry there? Does he hate them? I thought about Matt Abuke, also good value. Uh, 26.81, but with Tart and Jeff Simmons, you know, we're just we're pretty good at that spot. Uh, on that front three. Really could look at improving the offensive line. Ruiz is here, but didn't he sign an IRL contract extension with the Saints? Like, I'm 90% sure that happened. So, uh, didn't offer him a contract. Needed a guard. We need a guard in the center, and it's just, there's just no real value there whatsoever. Like, I think, like, you got, you know, 73, 74, but I can probably draft one of those guys, hopefully, in, like, second, third round. Um... So, yeah, we are going to sit this one out, which is not the worst thing. 
hundred plus million dollars gonna let us be aggressive next couple years in free agency if there's the right players available there's no player that was really worth us jumping up from pick 11 in this draft it's it's a typical draft um really good corners everything else kind of suspect and when i mean really good corners i mean really good corners uh brian mcfadden here 6-2 double b a man coverage pretty legit athlete as well 6-2 running a 4-3 Best letter grades goes to Larry Stewart out of Georgia. Usually Georgia Bulldogs. Fairly safe. Um, not as good of an athlete. You're going more so on the letter grades. Corner's not a gigantic need for us, so I do think we have a corner room that can continue to develop. We did scout, though, Matthew Stevens. Top five true talent. Second, third round. This might be a guy that is absolutely worth trading up in the second round to come up and get. So I think that's probably where we could be a little aggressive. I also really want to try to target this guy, Tony Red out of Texas. A tackle, B block shed, big time athlete, elite acceleration, elite speed. So if I did trade up in the second round, uh, I don't want to trade up with a lot of third round picks because I also want Tony Red. Like a perfect draft is getting someone and then that corner of the second round and then Tony Red late second, early third, however far we would need to trade up. So we now need to really, I think we should focus a little bit on the offensive line. Um, that's really where our team is weak. However, you know, not a crazy amount of, of value to be had. I think we look at Stuart Poole here at tackle, 6-4-3. That is kind of a guy that could kick inside to guard. A little bit on the shorter end. Or, you know, we got tight end. Not crazy scouting there. Wide receiver, Matt Eddins looks kind of legit. B release, B catch in traffic. Run out of time here. You have Casey Poole, top five pick at wide receiver. 6'5", 220. Ooh. Ooh, I got to do it. Oh, no. That didn't work out, but we do have pick 11 and 30 in the second round, so we're not going to overthink it. Here we go. Matthew Stevens here. Get our depth. I can't believe we just panic grabbed a wide receiver because I left the clock rolling. <sighs> Damn it. Well, this guy's a stud. All right, and with our second pick, we're going to get Tony Red here, the elite athlete, elite speed, acceleration, A tackle, B block shed, linebacker, who's going to kick inside in our scheme, and we're able to land another hidden dev. Actually, not bad. Late, too. We get a guy that had A man, B press, not much else at 6'4, rolls in dev trade. So, looking at our draft recap, at least no dev trade, Casey Poole looks like a stud. And makes it so we don't have to resign Rashad Bateman, who we did pick up his option. Uh, but at this size, 6'5", 220. You'd hate to say move him to tight end, but there's also an avenue there to see maybe what his rating would, would pop to. So we kind of just thought that was BPA, panicked a little bit. Luckily, we brought it back here with Matthew Stevens, 78 hidden dev corner. We got 76 hidden dev linebacker Tony Red. This guy's third, fourth rounder. Absolute value. Uh, Slate, 71, hit it up in the fourth round. Didn't have a whole lot of picks there. Still 69-69. Almost one of those perfect draft classes with no one below a 70. And we ended up getting number one true talent player. Number Tied for number two anyways, 77. I feel pretty good about that one. The only other... You know, think about it in hindsight. I would have probably grabbed... We had two legit top 10 tackles that were still on the board. When we picked. And what were their ratings? Look, they just went down there. We had Lowry and Poole. Lowry, 75. Okay, so that would have been... He wasn't even the guy that we were considering. But he would have been a good selection. Really, if we didn't panic and go wide receiver, the likely pick was going to be at tackle... Was it Stewart Poole? This one. And he's normal depth. So, eh, is what it is. So the last big thing we had to do is hire a new offensive coordinator. The bad news is no, definitely no meta playbooks. We have Tennessee with Chris Roberts. We have uh, Mike Tomlin. That's a run first. Jonathan Gannon, that's run first. Carolina might be our best option. We have double Carolina. We have Vegas. That is a very run-heavy offense. Uh, usually Josh Jacobs puts up ridiculous numbers. I'm... Mm, this guy, probably the fact that he has vertical threat, which means we can get boost to our quarterback to bump up Will Levis. And I have seen Bryce Young put up some pretty big numbers, so we are going to hire Don Sullivan. Welcome to the squad. Immediately, with our 50 staff points, just starting to work down the quarterback side of the tree. We've already bumped up the awareness by one, 
plus two to the deep accuracy, plus one to throw under pressure, plus one to the throw power, which gives Will Levis a very impressive 96 throw power to start year two of this rebuild. So at the midway point of the season, we are sitting atop the AFC South, but we're not patting ourselves on the back too much because we are four and three, which is probably on brand, probably where we should be. But with the change, bringing in the Carolina Panthers offense, we have a top five passing offense, which is what we need for Will Levis and his development. Uh, now, I do wish we had a better rushing attack. I do wish our defense was a little bit better, but it's a work in progress. Plus, where we're at with $116 million of salary cap, we still need to get this squad better. We still need to spend a whole lot of money where need be. Uh, up first, we got Stonehouse. We're going to get him locked in for the rest of the rebuild. One of the best punters in the NFL. He's always like one of the top free agents. I don't know why we're getting hardballed by a punter here, but not overly worried. We'll pick up the fifth-year option on Traylon Burks. And honestly, no real signs of slowing down. He's only looking for a two-year deal. We have more than enough funds to offer a fresh new contract for DeAndre Hopkins to make sure he retires a Tennessee Titan which, happy he wants to be here. Our best performance of the rebuild came week 11 in a 49-7 victory over the Green Bay Packers, in which our second round pick, Stevens, two interceptions, one pick, six. I'm not going to lie, saw 49 points. Thought we might have had a Will Levis, Offensive Player of the Week. But we get a breakout for Roger McCreary. Now, that was one thing I tweaked in our secondary. Because we hit on a 78 hit and dev corner, we already had Caleb Farley. We already have... Um, Murphy Bunting, Ido McCreary, kicked him to safety. He's normal dev, get an opportunity to get those reps and potentially go up to a star dev and find his home as our Kevin Byard successor here on the defense. All he needs to do is have a decent showing here against the Colts in a matchup that is very important for the outlook of the division. And we fall to six and five, still first, and we, oh, double L, brutal. Well, we got another opportunity a couple weeks later against the Texans. Sean Murphy Bunting looking to make the jump to a superstar corner from the depths of just kind of no-name free agent signing, low-key depth signing. Didn't really work out in Tampa Bay. If he could put it all together after a gigantic 33-3 victory for the Texans. Bummer. 0 for 2 for depth traits in our secondary this year. Oh, no. So we lose 38-31 to the Bills, and that cost us the playoffs. We were first place in the South going into Week 18. We lost. The Jaguars leapfrogged us, and our 10-7 record was not good enough to get a wild card spot. Brutal. That is brutal. First team out. Well, I mean, technically, Steelers and Dolphins also are going to be equally upset. Oh. Well, we're getting there. We're on. We're tracking. It's going like this, at least. It's not rocky road yet. We'll see where we finish year three. But we did finish with a top 10 offense, top 10 passing offense, top five defense. So we're getting the best of Rabel with the defense, and we're getting that bump that we were looking for on the offense by adding in and posting someone from Frank Wright's staff. Um, looking at the big picture here for our squad, Jeff Simmons up there for sacks, which you love seeing. Will Levis, eighth in yards, fourth in tutties. Absolutely, we will take that. 35 touchdowns, 7 picks. We get the return on investment that we were looking for by retooling this offense. Still getting some decent rushing production as Tajay Spears goes over 1,000 and double-digit touchdowns. We have Traylon Burks, who maybe is the best player so far in this rebuild. 80 catches, 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. We had 1,000 for DeAndre Hopkins. Conquo was solid. Bateman was solid. But there is going to need to become a little bit of push and figure out what we're going to do. Because Casey Poole, that is obviously not great investment and return on investment from a first-round pick, only getting 108 yards. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get him on the field. Uh, defensively, Jack Gibbons. This guy better go up dev trade. He won Defensive Player of the Week, I believe it was three times. He got it Week 16, uh, and he got it like two times, I think, before Week 10. If he does not go up a dev trade, I'm going to be very frustrated. Uh, 124 tackles, four TFLs, two sacks, Three picks for him. We got 18 sacks, 20 TFLs for Jeff Simmons, eight sacks from Landry. Uh, we have um, Red was a hidden dev. He popped as a star. We did not get the best dev traits. It needs to be said. Uh, he is only a star. And we have our other corner. Uh, where are he at? Matthew Steen. Now, that is what you love to see out of a second-round rookie pick. Six interceptions on 93 tackles. What is a little bit of a wet fart is that for a top five true talent player, 
only rolling a star dev, but I can only imagine he is going to get a dev trade here, be it off of his production, be it off of winning Defensive Rookie of the Year, or any of those multitudes. He will be better than a star dev, I think, come season's end. Will Levis, number six in the MVP race, which you'll love to see. Quickly looking for the individual awards. We do get Defensive Rookie of the Year going to Stevens Red, making the top five, coming in at third place. We have, wow, well, Stevens wins best defensive back. Uh, we might have a slim, 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 slim chance that he will get that rare double dip where he, off of his six picks, will go up dev trade. That's the only time I've ever seen the double dip is when you get one based off your production and one off an award. I never see someone get two dev trades based off of two awards. You know what I'm saying? Like it would make, like there's two easy ways to get dev trade increases in the off season. One is for you to get top five or top three or whatever of your player stats. And then the second way is by winning awards. That's by making the Pro Bowl. Sometimes you get it by player of the week. Sometimes you get it by winning, obviously, you know, player of the year in your respected category or MVP. I've never seen some player get double dev trade by winning, say, defensive rookie of the year and DB of the year. But I have seen it when you get a dev trade based off of your production and an award. So let's see what Stevens gets here. When all is said and done, did he get the double? He did not get the double dip. I'll tell you right now, if he is still on a goddamn star dev, we got absolutely robbed. No, luckily, we do get a superstar boost. But I think maybe we got shortchanged a little bit. And what a shocking Super Bowl here in Madden 24. The Chiefs and the Cowboys. No way. Has that ever happened before? Well, let's take a look at our squad. I am expecting a star dev for Will Levis, which we got. We also gained an X Factor on Traylon Burks, who has been simply, we're going to give him a team captaincy badge. He has been simply incredible. What a turnaround for this guy's career. And uh, he is very much ready to succeed and become our wide receiver one, even though I'm not moving him out of the slot. That is where he needs to play. You we're going to use him like the Lions use Amon Ross St. Brown with your best skill position player in the slot. That is where his best spots are going to be. And we're going to have Bateman, Poole, Hopkins, whatever combination. And obviously, I would hate... For Poole being a first-round pick to not really get on the field until DeAndre Hopkins retires. But I don't know. That, that might be how things kind of work out. But I do think going into the offseason, definitely need to go full-on on the offensive line. Because really, outside of Skaronski, everybody is replaceable and upgradable. On the defensive side, we got an X-Factor on Jeff Simmons, an X-Factor on Landry. Three player of the weeks. No dev trades for Jack Gibbons. We did get a dev trade on McCreary, who we converted to free safety, where he was a normal dev at the beginning of the season. But I can't believe, out of everything, Gibbons did not go up dev. Wow. Another free agent pair, we just swing for the fences. We need to get the best lineman we can. Jedrick Wills, 26 years old, 79, with a dev trade. Easily ticks that box. Uh, I would have loved to get Javon Holland, if not the breakout that we saw last year to Roger McCreary. Even then, we probably still could have got Javon Holland and just... You know, is what it is with McCreary because that gap, I don't know if McCreary's ever going to be in 91. But we're trying to, for whatever reason, have some sense of realism and rewarding players for standing out and developing our homegrown talent. Uh, so, yeah, the, this is a year that you definitely would have wanted a DB. Of course, our DBs are definitely trending in the right direction. Some of the best young players on our team. So, can't be overly aggressive there. I mean, our defense is solid as well. We are very much needing a role where we would have had multiple guys on the offensive line. That would have been worth signing, and that is really unfortunately the case. Unfortunately, the case because ugh, it's the best thing you say. Ugh, not good. I mean, we got Myers here, but I, I could probably draft one if I prioritize with our top picks this year. Going on the offensive line, I'm going to be able to get some guys that are likely 73, 74 at worst, and I might actually get some dev traits. So I think that is where we're going to have to do our damage. And again, not the end of the world, rolling over our salary cap. So the first round of the draft at pick 16, we want to go on the offensive line, and I got two prospects. One's Ray Aldridge, who has B pass block, A run block, elite speed jumping. He's big time at least pretty much like your Lane Johnson regen. However, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at tackle, and I went and looked at Paul Pounds, who looks like he's built like a guard at 6'4", 330, A, B's across the board. However, I might be enticed by the athlete, because I get this athlete here. Then we can move Jedrick Wills into guard, which might be the best course of action. So I got to go with the athlete. Ray Allridge, likely going to kick the right tackle. And then we will kick Jedrick Wills into one of the guard spots. 
And then we can also kick Nicolas Petit Ferrier technically into one of the guard spots. So we need a setter next, if not VPA being a guard. We're going to grab the best setter, I think, available. Second round pick, projected Marcus Williams, who has A pass block, B run block, and elite change of direction agility. Just very nice athletic setter who's going to plug and play, be a day one starter for us. There's your hidden dev. And they're just daring me. I don't need a corner at all. This guy has just still been there, the top pick available. Brandon Monty. Sure, if no one wants him. I'll take him. I don't even care what that base rate. It's probably going to be ridiculous. He's probably going to be 76, a free 76 in the third round. Let's just grab a tight end, the fastest one. He had A catching, A catch in traffic, best athlete. Roll a dev. I don't actually don't think his rating is going to be crazy high, but we do need to make a decision. Check a Conquo. Not really popping off in terms of development, so it might be just more cost efficient to go with a rookie on a rookie contract than it would be paying him in the next season or two. Oh my God, another one. Just another hidden dev line. We'll find a spot for him, I guess. Collecting them like freaking Pokemon. So take a look at our haul. Pretty good. That will do just a 70. How'd I call it? I, I've done enough drafts. 76 normal dev corner. Just daring us at drafting. Got 72 hidden dev tight end. 74 hidden dev center. 74 hidden dev center. 74 hidden dev probably going to be a right tackle. I'm moving to right tackle right now just just because. Uh, I'll be with it, man. We said we we're going to go fix the offensive line. And that's exactly what we did with this draft class on top of Jedrick Wills. Was there anyone crazy in this draft class? Any generational players? No. No, there wasn't. So, happy with what we did. It was roll to year three. Let's get a quick update where the squad is at because we've had some, obviously, upgrades, some shuffling around. Will Levis up to a star depth. Taji Spears, 90 superstar. Traylon Burks, somehow, subways a 91, technically 92 with our boost. X-Factor. Which is absolutely incredible. We now have competition at tight end. And the offensive line is coming together. Skaronski, Jedrick Wills, we signed in free agency, kicked him into guard. Hudson and Williams are two interior linemen. Uh, we flex Williams from center out to right guard. And then Allridge, our first round pick, built like Lane Johnson, regen. Hopefully he has a similar type ceiling. On the defense, Tart Jones are solid. But Jeff Simmons has been an absolute monster in this sim and his 94 x factor reflects that harold landry also up to an x factor and even though he's probably the most slept on player jack gibbons three-time defensive player of the week last year did not get a dev trade uh we did roll double overall from the uh training camp which is nice he's playing as an 80 overall uh we got mccreary making the transition from safe uh, from corner to safety which looks legit hooker solid we're deep at corner, led by the reigning defending defensive rookie of the year, Stevens, who's an 87 superstar coming off a six-interception campaign, looking to repeat in his sophomore year. It is year three of this rebuild with the Tennessee Titans. It is now time, I think, for us to expect to make the playoffs, to expect to win the division, which we were very, very close last year. I think we're going to be able to put it all together. And uh, also, while we're at it, let's see if we can get Will Levis another dev trade increase, get him up to a goldie boy. And at the bye week here in year three, coming off a big 38-30 victory. Week eight, Will Levis. Come on, show me a Will Levis play of the week. And it is Jeff Simmons, three sacks on five tackles and a big victory over one of the best teams in the NFC in the San Francisco 49ers. And that propels us to tied for first place in the AFC South. Let's take a look at some contracts. So we've been very, very frugal in free agency. That's going to allow us to pretty much whenever, wherever, uh, in terms of our in-house free agents. If we want to keep them, we can. A Conquo, see, that's where we, you know, we will save when we can because we just drafted a really solid tight end prospect. And uh, actually, now that knowing that his contract is up this year, I probably will bump the other tight end that we just drafted, the rookie, to the starting spot to maximize uh, his, his playing time. Let's see, will Bateman take this offer? He will, I'll just say. Giving him a mid-offer and him still accepting was probably the only way he was staying, if not, because we, obviously we still did draft a wide receiver in the first round is not seeing the field. Um, we got McCreary, who's making a very nice transition to safety. We'll come back to the table. That was a little bit on the low end. Caleb Farley's been solid at corner. Staying healthy. Thank God injuries are off for Caleb Farley's case. Uh, so we will come back to the table for McCreary. Everyone else, thanks for your service. Hopefully we can get you our ring this year. Go on a Cinderella run in the playoffs. Uh, we also will pick up the fifth-year option in the offseason for Skaronski. Now, this time last year, we lost Week 18, missed the playoffs. That is absolutely on the table right now in a very competitive AFC South where us, the Jags, and the Texans go 10-6. We just beat the Texans Week 17. Very slim victory, 24-21. to And let's see if either we're going to make our first playoffs here in Year 3 of a five-year rebuild or we're going to crash and burn the final week. And we handle it. We lose. Well, at 10-7, and good enough to sneak into the playoffs 
and take on the Chargers as we now also massive boost rule Levis but for in terms of a base overall get him to an 80 which is not which is not it's good it's fine development is fine and again not every rebuild which I mean I'm saying this like it's happened a lot it hasn't I'd say generally speaking in our Madden 24 reels we haven't had ridiculous quarterback developments but you know back to previous Maddens it always felt a little bit better when uh, you would win a rebuild, win a Super Bowl, and not have like that quarterback that became an X factor, uh, and you know we're getting a little bad with Will Levis. Not a ridiculous season, not a bad season. Twenty nine tutties, thirty seven hundred yards, thirty on the dot. I mean that's my cutoff. I think thirty total touchdowns for not saying it's a bad year. So he just barely got in. Traylon Burks continues to be phenomenal in this scheme. He, I mean, he's scheme proof. He was ridiculous when we were year one with the Titans offense. Switching to the Panthers, still pretty good. Uh, Tony Red, leading tackler, Gibbons right there with him. We got 70 and a half sacks from Jeff Simmons, who has been, you know, it's been Jeff Simmons and Traylon Burks. Absolutely have been the top two players in this rebuild. Sean Murray buffing, four picks, leading the team. Uh, looking at individual awards quickly, seeing if we get any Tennessee Titans. Defensive player of the year going to Jeff Simmons. Which you absolutely love seeing that. Traylon Burks gets wide receiver of the year. I mean, both those guys are X-Factors. So it's not like we're going to get any dev trait off of that or new abilities off of that. But happy for them and happy for this team to get their first opportunity here in year three to get some playoff success. Get a first playoff victory under the belt of Will Levis. And it is an agonizingly close defeat in the wildcard round. 24-21 to the Chargers. We fall. In a game where Will Levis hold his head up high. Three touchdowns, no picks. Just couldn't stop the rushing attack. Couldn't cover Mike Williams. That's a hell of a start, though. I think we're going to be able to build off of that year four and five. You got to remember, man, we have been sitting on an ass load of salary cap. That, if we can get players, like if we can maximize our salary cap with a talent in a good role of free agency, we're going to be one of the best teams in the AFC, if not the whole round NFL. Look at our squad at the end of the season. In terms of dev traits, Williams... Marcus Williams, superstar dev lineman. That is an outstanding role. Everything else looking like stars. Alderidge star, Hudson star. But I will take that as this offensive line looks outstanding going forward. Uh, Brian at tight end as well developing nicely. He's going to take over for Chig Okonkwo. As our starter, Traylon Burks holds on to his X-Factors. Chazzy Spears holds on to his superstar. No superstar for Levis, but he didn't really play as such, on the defensive side, dev traits look the same. We lost the X-Factor on Landry, but we gained a star on Jack Gibbons, who maybe has been the most deserving of a dev trait increase. Uh, Arden Key completely loses his dev trait, so I think going into this offseason, uh, we're going to be looking for a pass rusher uh, to, to take over for Arden Key. Honestly, just a general pass rusher, because Harold Landry is just regressing at this point. So if there's not one in free agency, this could be a year. If there's one that looks really good in the draft, we mortgage the future a little bit of picks that aren't even going to affect this video and try to be aggressive if there's an absolute baller in the draft. But hopefully, free agency, we get a good roll and spend some of this war chest of salary cap we have remaining. But while we're here, we're going to start on a sad note as DeAndre Hopkins hangs him up after 13 years. What a monster. Oh, man, love seeing just this who's who of, of premier pass rushers, 3-4 pass rusher edges that we're looking for. Oh, Khalil Mack. Don't say Khalil Mack's available. Normal dev Khalil Mack. Are you kidding me? What have we done to be blessed with? I mean, hope to God, man, there's someone there. I just, I don't know. I feel like we say the same things. Oh, we could, get, could bring Kevin Byard home. I just feel like we say the same things, man. Every rebuild. We need better, funner free agency. Fuck. If you're someone, come to my door. Knock on my door right now and say, no, free agency needs to be the way it is. Not, needs to be, you know. I don't even want to say it's realistic. It's like hyper-realistic. Where like no good player ever hits the open market. If that is you. And you like the state of free agency here. Fuck you. All due respect. So the bad news is there's no S-tier top five pass rusher in this year's draft class. Which, which is unfortunate. Uh, you know, the best. You got Jaleel Hood. 6'5", 264. is a tackle, B finesse move. Not necessarily what you're looking for. Not a brutal athlete, but obviously that's just a guy first round projected anyway. You kind of just, you hope he falls to you. Great name here in Bart Gallery. A lot of, you know, if this was a franchise, you could probably market that and take a trip down to the Bart Gallery. A power move, B tackle, uh, elite jumping, which is definitely not 
a big time trade. And then, of course, there's straight up no left outside linebackers projected going in the first round. And at right outside linebacker, um, we had two here. We have Emmanuel Westbrook at a Tennessee, 6'5, 270. It's a little big for like a stand up edge rusher, but a uh, decent athlete. But I think the, the guy that you're going to want to look here is Jacob Cooper, 6'3, 245. A little undersized, A tackle, uh, A pursuit, B block shed, D zone coverage. He's pass rusher. Elite speed, jumping, great acceleration. Also as I mean, wish I really wish we saw what that finesse move is. Uh, but eight tackles also pretty, you know. That's the guy we want. I don't know where he's going to be going. I'm going to guess he's going top ten. Let's see. I mean, give me the most recent. I think that's the guy I want. But if I have to overtrade, I look. He's going first overall. <laughs> oh, he does look good. He. I will say he does. What do they want? All right, I've literally come up with like every combination to try to get this first pick. And uh, it's just, it's not happening, I don't think. Unless, I don't know. Let me see. Like, I'll even eat the $55 million that you have for Derek. I'll take the salary dump. Let me do this. Like, no, no chance. Fucking enjoy the pass rusher. Gotta be fuck. Watch him be an X Factor, too. God damn it! And we're just left here holding the bag, man. Uh,. You know, I guess Ben Pro. I don't know, man. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Fuck me, right? Fucking Saints. Stupid. You know what? I usually do get my way when I want to try to trade up. So maybe having a little bit of resistance once in a while. I already know that that pass rusher is going to be... Like, he would have been the guy that probably would have put this team over the edge to win a Super Bowl. And we just drafted a fucking 66 pass rusher. While the Saints got 78. Jacob Cooper... Please be star dev. Please be star dev. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking hate it. Hate it. So the halfway point of year number four, and we're playing really good football. Five and two, tied for first place in the division. Let's, let's run this one here. It's always a good measuring stick. Anytime you can play against the Cowboys or the Chiefs. Regular season, you always like to see in the regular season because it's not as punishing. And we handle business actually. Look at that. 21 16 going to 6 and 2. And my God, what is going on with the Bengals at 1 and 7? But here at the midway point, let's take a look at some contracts. Who's going to make the full five years of the rebuild? And we're going to start obviously with some of the crucial players. We got Traylon Burks. We'll come back. We pretty much need him to sign on the dotted line. We got Tajay Spears signed on. We got Will Levis looking for $163 million. The man of the rebuild stays with the team. We got Murphy Bunny. We let him walk. He's likely going to be the top available corner on the open market. We got Jack Gibbons, who's been a great role player for us. Get him on a three-year, $18 million deal. Harold Landry in the same regard. Like, we just can't find edge rushers. So even if he regresses down to like a 77 star, probably going to be better than what is available on the open market. I did sign John Grenard. A little gator bias, but he's uh, just a band-aid stopgap at left outside linebacker after we just... I'm not going to say we botched it. It's just, you know, the the Saints made a very smart decision not trading out of that pick. Uh, so we will handle business on this Traylon Burks contract extension. Hopefully we continue really, really strong as we eye the one seed and or our first divisional title and or both to close out year four. And year four closes with a divisional title. We go 12-5, and 88 overalls across everything. Uh, pretty disappointed that, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, what happened to our passing offense? One of the worst passing offenses in the league. We may have to uh, look at hiring a new offensive coordinator for the final year of this rebuild. If we really want to try and put Will Levis in the best uh, position to succeed, those are not good passing numbers at all. Um, and I got to do better. I got to gotta find a better avenue for this offense to operate. Uh, Traylon Burke, I mean, again, right there, we want to just cost ourselves Traylon Burke's X Factor, which definitely would want to use those abilities uh, for the final years of this rebuild. Hopefully, we don't get too harsh of regression. Gibbons was a tackle machine, 14 half sacks from Simmons, four picks from Matthew Stevens, who's been an incredible player for us since we drafted him in the second round. And oh, great, we get the MVP in the first round of the playoffs. Awesome. I'm sure that's not going to be. Anything as we get kicker of the year as our lone award winner. What do they got? Okay, just uh, top five offense, top five defense. Well, 
At least we got it this night, year five. We can have an opportunity to go on a little bit of a run. Oh, we win, and we get the right to lose to the Chiefs in the divisional round. But at least we get that first playoff victory for Will Levis. Under our oh, my God, we beat the Chiefs. What? 32-28 with 15 points in the fourth. And it was very much not really Will Levis. Pretty average game by him. Two tutties for Spears. Burks had a solid game. We got two sacks from Red, two sacks from Jeff Simmons, a pick from SMB, and somehow, some way, a Cinderella run meets in an all AFC South championship game. And honestly, interesting development on the other side. Looking for two first time Super Bowl champs. This works out well for us. We handle KC. There's no Dallas. It's almost like this has to be. Our year to win it. Year four it needs to be the year. We ooh, that is close. Twenty three seventeen, but we punch our ticket to the Super Bowl on the back of a great managed game by Will Levis. All things considered, uh, we're just playing. Honestly, we're playing kind of like current Titans football. We're just relying on the run game, playing stout defense, and with that, it is a Lions Titans Super Bowl. Probably words that will. Never, ever be said, ever. But you best believe we are going to grab front row seats. Might even hop in a time or two to throw a couple Will Levis bombs. As the 12-5 and 5 Tennessee Titans take on the 10-7 and 7 Detroit Lions. 89 overall against 87 overall. Tennessee with their 18th ranked offense. 4th ranked defense against Detroit with their 20th ranked offense. 6th ranked defense. All right. This is going to be a, a nice 12-7 Super Bowl. Let's go, baby. What was the last time Titans won the Super Bowl? Was it like 2000, 99, whatever, one of those years before I was even watching football? We start hot with an opening drive. A tud. Back to back. Detroit gets an instant score. I'm going to hop in. I'll apply the rule of three. I can come in three times. And I do think on this third and four, that's a sneaky good time to come in. I feel like if we convert this third and four, the CPU is going to get these boys in the end zone and get this 21 up on the board. We got Traylon Burks in the slot. That's where we want to go. I mean, hell, I'd love to be able to complete this for a touchdown, but we will just run it, break a tackle on Dahl, whoever the hell that is, not Jack Campbell, and move the chains. We're going to let the CPU do the damn thing, put up 21 on the board. But, D I mean, hey, Detroit is keeping with us, tied up at 20. I hate cashing in again so early, but we are very much like I'm feeling like oof, dicey, dicey. Third and one. Who wants it? Tight end. I'm looking at the tight end here. Pretty much no one covers him. He's sneaky good. Sneaky good. Beat out Chiga Conquo for the starting tight end gig. And that is a go ahead tutty in halftime 28 21. Two bad offenses that are just. Running over two really good defenses. 31-28. End of game drive. We're in the red zone. Third down. We kick the field goal. I'm sure they're going to... Oh, come on. Stop it. Okay. They're, you, know, you know it's all mad. And they're going to get their points. And, of course, we're down fucking one. Oh, my God, Madden. Never change. Never fucking change. Okay. Traylon Burks. Going a straight line. Oh my God! What a PBU! Is that CJ? That's CJ GJ. No, I'm going for it. Burke slant. Trail on Burke slant. If we can, if these guys. Got him. Go. Oh, breaks the tackle. Traylon Burke zeroes on the clock. Tennessee, our Super Bowl champions, with a chance to run it back and get a little dynasty going on. But it always feels a lot better getting it done in year four. No pressure for year five. And what a broken tackle. X Factor. I think he's up to a 97 overall. Traylon Burks. Came in here, and obviously we've had some great success with 
Will Levis, realistic success with Will Levis. Because it's not like he's gone on, developed in an MVP candidate, superstar, superstar X Factor. He's like a base 81 overall, star dev. And then the man that stole the show is freaking Traylon Burks. Got superstar dev in the first training camp, developed into an X Factor, took the tutelage and training from his mentor, DeAndre Hopkins. And he's always had that in his wheelhouse, man. He, you know, if I'm the Titans, you got to start using him like Debo Samuel. That's what he was used in Arkansas. That's what made him probably the best weapon in the SEC that year. And that's exactly what we saw there. They run after the catch. He's like a running back with a ball in his hands. And Will Levis, year four of a five-year rebuild. Like, you know what? In real life, it's probably going to take freaking, let's be honest. It's going to take Mike Vrabel probably another five years to give up on Ryan Tannehill, to give the free freaking reins to Will Levis to be the starting quarterback. But this is what could happen if you let that happen. And he's probably, what, our MVP? On this day, Jared Goff went for five touchdowns against my top five defense. Um, hey, we almost got super simmed, but in the end, who's laughing now? You know what? Screw it. Give the MVP to Traylon Burks. Just classic, Matt. We're going to go after Nolan Smith for our edge rusher. I need a wide receiver edge, and like as soon as I load up for agency, kicker. Kicker <laughs> and a bunch of 30-year-olds are the top available free agents. Very on brand, but uh, we'll go out and get ourselves one of the best pass rushers in all of Madden 24, Nolan Smith. Let's go. And a draft that honestly does not matter for the outlook of our squad because we're not going to be able to get a pass rusher. It's going to be better than Nolan Smith. Um, probably just Chase BPA, which might be this freaking guy. Seth Hodel. A zone, A tackle, B block shed. Great speed, great jumping, elite acceleration. Welcome to the team. That'll do. And all in all, that's pretty much an absolute slam dunk at pick 32. Getting a 76 linebacker. Now, I wish he was an edge rusher, a true outside linebacker for our scheme. But I think he's definitely going to compliment our linebacking room. And absolutely BPA at that spot. We also got a 72 D tackle here in the second round. Great name. Fedarian Monk, San Diego State defensive end in our scheme. We'll take that every day of the week. Any generational player is the first and only generational player this whole rebuild. Going 1-1 to the Green Bay Packers. 84 corner out of Michigan State. Good God. Nice. There's our squad as we look to defend our Super Bowl title here in year five. We did unfortunately lose the superstar on Tajay Spears. Like a leads 97 overall. Not that big of a worry. Traylon Burks looking good. Will Levis trying his best to be our franchise quarterback. The O-line is the best offensive line in the league. Defensively, we added Nolan Smith, which really helps our linebacking core. Now Landry is regressing, but he gained his X-Factor back last year, which is huge. Jeff Simmons has been carrying the load for this defense, so he has been S-tier as well as Stevens. Uh, no weakness. This is a team that has no glaring weakness and absolutely should be favorites to represent the AFC yet again back-to-back -back years. Well, that's just perfect. Didn't even make the playoffs to defend our... to defend our title. <laughs> Nine and eight. Um, offense was better. Finished with a top 10 offense, top 10 defense. But uh, could not top the Jags in the division. And you know what? At least at least you, it's easier pill to swallow when, like, the Bengals and Steelers got shafted worse than we did. We weren't even the first one out. Damn. Um, at least we got our Super Bowl, right? It was mission accomplished. Why? What happened this year? I mean, Will Levis, respectable numbers. 3,700 yards, 30 tutties. 12-7 and 7 for Spears. Burks. Whoa, 1,200 yards, 21 touchdowns. I one thing, I will remember this. I will remember. if, if like Literally the next time I see, if Tra does Traylon Burks even play anymore? Like the next time I see Traylon Burks, I'm going to think of this rebuild. And be like, well, that's how good he hypothetically could be in a fantasy role. Jeff Simmons has been an absolute god here today. Let's take a look at the awards just because I think Traylon Burks probably got some rare respect here. Defensive player, that's the second time Jeff Simmons has won Defensive Player of the Year in this rebuild. It's also the second time Traylon Burks has got Wide Receiver of the Year. We got Lineman of the Year in Marcus Williams. We got D-Lineman of the Year in Jeff Simmons. Lots of individual success, unfortunately. Could not defend our Super Bowl crown. 
Take a look at the career stats through five years. Will Levis sitting at 18,000 yards passing, 148 tutties to 50 picks. Not bad. Again, like a realistic career path. I think at 28 years old, which is not old by any means, like that is a quarterback like in the middle of their prime. If Will Levis is sitting as an 84 quarterback in Madden, I think Titus, he's pretty happy with his development and where he's at. Uh, and obviously, you know, the Super Bowl definitely helps a lot. Uh, Ty J Spears, massive shoes to fill after we traded Derrick Henry. 5,800 yards, 36 touchdowns. He was a superstar for most of this rebuild. He was awesome, but you got to give all the credit on the offense anyways. Even with Will Levis, Traylon Burks was him. 400 catches, 6,600 yards, 69 touchdowns in six seasons. So he has now gone on to average out over 10 touchdowns a year, over 1,000 yards a season. That is everything the Tennessee Titans needed him to be. Uh, trying to come in and replace A.J. Brown. Defensively, Harold Landry finished the rebuild. 106 TFLs, 59 and a half sacks. Gibbons with 500, uh, over 500 total tackles. We got 103 sacks on 115 TFLs for Jeff Simmons. Monster. This really was the Simmons and Traylon Burks rebuild. Uh, 18 picks. Murphy and Bundy did most of that with that. 14 for Hooker. 13 for Stevens, who's easily, I mean, with that production as well, one of the best corners we've drafted in the last couple of Maddens. Because usually... Don't get a lot of production with high-end courts. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just my scheme. But uh, usually interception numbers aren't particularly high. And Stevens was absolutely the guy for us in that department. So there you go, fellas. A little surprise rebuild dropping for you guys here on Monday. Uh, I am trying my best this week to get back to the daily uploads. I love the daily uploads. It's something I've always prided my channel on. Got a little late. Well, I'm not going to say I got a little lazy. Literally got COVID. And it's. And I'm not saying long COVID, but it's... It's been harder to get up in the morning the last, you know, two weeks, week or two post being sick for a week and a half. But uh, I, I think, you know, we're, we're getting ready. And I'm going to I'm gonna set the goal of weekly uploads because it's been a minute since we have a Cardinals franchise. But tomorrow being Halloween and we have a little bit of a Halloween theme in our pink slips right now with the most feared. I think we're going to do pink slips tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Wednesday, we'll do Cardinals. Thursday will be something. Friday will be like I want to try to get two to three episodes of the Cardinals this week because we we've, we've kind of cooled off a little bit of that series and I like I literally have a whiteboard of things I want to drop in that Cardinals. If you thought the running back strike was something, just you wait, just you freaking wait. But had fun with this rebuild. I'm also every single day right now, uh, given starting Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, I'm doing one position on my 2025 draft class. I got to actually touch base with Bengal to see where he's at with the 2024 class. And really, I want him to finish before I'm done because I can see who he uses in his class, who's left over, and I can put them into my draft class. But uh, those are coming because I really, really want to start doing realistic rebuilds and letting you guys that are on next-gen Xbox use our draft classes, which are going to be pretty fun. Uh, but I will actually tonight, just to give you an update where I'm at, uh, I am on the centers in guards on the interior. I've done tackles. I've done tight ends. I've done running backs. I've done fullbacks. I've done quarterbacks. I've done kickers and punters. Today, I'm going to finish the offense, so that is all done, and it's just full-on one position tonight on the defensive side of the ball, so hopefully those will be up to you guys in the next week or two. I'll post it when they are done. Uh, that's about it. Let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see rebuild next, or should we run it back, our next rebuild video, with another divisional rebuild? I actually had people saying we should do the AFC South. They were the runner-up the last time I pulled the room, so let me know in the comment section below, but that'll do it for me today, guys. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed, and until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out, love ya, have a good one.